Tom Tugendhat, who's a Conservative MP, said on the 13th of April that the Chinese Communist Party had deliberately lied about COVID-19. That's a huge claim from a British parliamentarian. Was that true? Did China deliberately lie about aspects of COVID-19 to uh, other uh, members of the international community or to the WHO? I don't believe that the Chinese government in Beijing deliberately lied to the international community, no. Um, in fact, every piece of evidence that I've seen um, tells me that Chinese med- uh, doctors and scientists communicated rapidly with Beijing. And when Beijing realized they had a crisis on their hands, um, they authorized publication of information about the virus um, uh, at the very end of December. Um, that doesn't, that's not to say that in Wuhan, when the outbreak first took place, we know that local officials in the police and local government took steps that were completely designed to suppress discussion about the outbreak. Um, and, and, and clearly that was wrong. But that's very different. That's very different from saying that the government deliberate, tried to deliberately mislead the international community. The Chinese government learnt lessons from the way it handled the SARS outbreak 20 years ago, where it did try to deceive the international community. It explicitly lied to the international community. And it was only when the WHO called them out on that, that they had to capitulate and admit the crisis that was taking place. So that lesson was one that was very important. They They promised themselves that they would never be humiliated on the international stage again. And so they actually have moved very quickly on on this occasion to release information about the virus, about the disease, about the genetic sequence in those early weeks of January. So I think it's completely unfair of Tom Tugendhat to blame China in the way that he he does. I believe that the the, the entire genome was sequenced and and available to scientists around the world from mid-January, was it? Yes, early. I think it was January the 12th. Right. I mean, that's a level of transparency that i mean it was technically impossible at the uh, in the early 21st century yes. why do you think why do you think politicians are keen to to allay blame like that um i think that it's very easy to blame another country to deflect responsibility from your own government i think there's also a xenophobia a racism against china um which is pretty disgusting to see I would actually say, go much further and say that we owe a debt of gratitude to China for the way that it has handled the, this outbreak. We, we absolutely owe a debt of gratitude to the uh, doctors and nurses and scientists who were on the front lines managing this outbreak in the first, in the first place. Um, they gathered the information. I mean, remember, um, that they wrote up these papers that we published in this last week of January. These were Chinese authors from another country writing in a foreign language, publishing in a medical journal uh, thousands of miles away. Um, that was an act of, of, of full disclosure about what was taking place in their country um, and risked actually humiliating them, putting them under the international spotlight. But they did it because they knew they had a duty to the rest of the world to tell the story of what was taking place there, to warn the world about what was happening. And in fact, if you read those papers um, now, you can see that the entire story of what's happened in the West over the past 12 months is described in those papers. It's just that we didn't read them. We didn't pay attention to them. So it's our failure, not their failure. Of course, that that sort of catchphrase you're hearing from the American alt-right, China lied, people died. And you think, well, Taiwan's had eight people die. Thailand's Mm. had 77 people die. You know, were they telling them the truth, but not the rest of the world? I think it's a very strange thing to say. Well, isn't there there an irony here that um, now the international exemplar in terms of the way the the pandemic was handled and the economic recovery is actually China? Um, the Chinese economy is about the only one that's bounced back um, very, very quickly. And what that shows actually is that this alleged trade-off between health and the economy is completely wrong. Actually, saving lives, protecting health, 
delivers you economic success. It's and, and this libertarian argument that we're currently seeing that somehow that we're, we're by by focusing on health we're destroying the economy and our primary motive should be to protect civil liberties, protect the economy, and that means accepting a certain level of death in our... I mean, this is completely wrong. Every piece of evidence from East Asian countries shows that actually focusing on suppressing the community transmission, protecting health, delivers you economic gains.